When Trey Moses arrived in Muncie, this didn't happen often. He could dunk, but it wasn't easy. You know, it wasn't something that it, he could do on a consistent basis. And he certainly wasn't in a position where um, game speed, game situation, he was going to feel comfortable um, going up there and putting it down. Now it happens fairly regularly, as does Moses taking over ball games. When he's a dominant force and he's out there playing and rebounding and playing aggressive, He's unstoppable, and I feel like we have a very good chance of winning every time he does that. I feel like I can be, you know, uh, an all-Mac guy. Um, the coaches have the same confidence in me, so they're going to push me to be, you know, be that. His sophomore season's been a breakout. Six double-doubles and 14 games scoring in double figures. But it all started here. The postseason last year, a double-double in a double-overtime win at Tennessee State and then 15 points at Columbia. I can't remember who it was on the outside, but I had like good post position and um, I yelled at him to give me the ball and I, <laughs> and I uh, finished, the, finished the shot. And, um, that was probably the first time where I really like, demanded the ball. He went from a guy who was shy, you know, quiet as a church mouse in some respects, to a guy who's, you know, not to say he's the life of the party, but uh, he's a guy who could certainly command the room at this point. It would shock anybody who knows him off the court. I mean, it might even shock his parents sometimes. But, uh, I mean, he's, he's, he's a completely different guy on the court. It might shock his parents, but Trey's dad had a lot to do with the sophomores blossoming. He's always been um, one to be really hard on me. Um, it's a pro and a con for me. <laughs> I mean, he's just like, you're, you know, you're too big to, to not be, you know, getting eight, nine, ten rebounds a game, and, you know, I, f I completely agree with him. It didn't happen overnight, though. It dates back to an original fear of redshirting when he arrived on campus last fall. We both came in overweight, and uh, I know as a freshman, you don't want to come in and hear, oh, you might have to redshirt, and for me, it scared me, and he had a similar story where, he's, where I remember hearing that he was kind of scared to get a red shirt too because he wanted to play right away and he wanted to help make an impact. Is he going to red shirt? What's he going to do? And I was completely against red shirting. Um, so I just, you know, did everything um, that they wanted me to do. The time that we started to figure out, you know what, we might have something here was when we were down in the Bahamas. And in this first, you know, quote unquote college game, he had like 12 points, five blocks, and like five assists in, you know, 20 minutes. And we've said to ourselves, you know what, might have a little something here. What they have is a big who can score, shoot, rebound, protect the rim, and pass with the best of them. Trey's throwing behind the back passes that coaches a lot of times are going to say, you know, those aren't good passes, those aren't the kind of passes we want guys to, to do. But when you have a guy who has a special ability, sometimes you kind of got to let him play. And let them win. I hate to lose. Um, no matter what I'm doing, um, I'm always trying to win. I, no matter if it's, you know, like eight ball on the, the iPhone or whatever it is, I'm just always competitive and I want to win in everything that I do. Everything but playing against his coach, that is. The one thing he's yet to quite crack. He's probably the best post defender I've ever played against. My hope is that as we do those things and I work out with him, that some of the little tricks of the trade and things that aren't necessarily things I can tell him with my voice, he picks up from us, us being in those situations. It's a learning experience and I, I look at him every day as you know someone I'm, I'm striving to be. That's something I think the Cardinals would take any day of the week. Joel Godet, Ball State All Access and BallStateSports.com.